Hi and welcome back to the second video of the NestJS authentication with the JWT and password hashing series. So let's shortly wrap up what we are doing in this video here. So we want to make sure that you can um, register against the API with like uh, providing the name, the email and the password, that you can log in against the API by providing an email and a password and uh, of course getting all the users like in the first video that was already working. And we will always make sure that every request against our API is being validated. Um, and for this, we use validation pipe. We will also add bcrypt for password hashing and compare um, if you log in or try to log in the password hash. And we will always um, return appropriate status codes. For example, if the email is already um, in use, so you can't register with it, or if you have a wrong password for the login and so on. And at the end, we will um, check everything with Postman and make some example requests. Important to know is that in this video, we are not generating the JWT. This will happen in the next video. So here we can now go over the structure of the video very uh, shortly. So first we will make an overview over the video outcome or look at it. Then we will read the user story for this video and then we implement the user story and close it. So let's have a quick look at the outcome of this video. You can see here we have three routes, one where we can register or make a post request to register a new user, one where we get all the users in the database, and one where we can log in. And you can see here for the post request, if we provide, for example, an email that is already being used, then we get a status code 409 and email already in use. If we provide, for example, no email at all, then um, this validates with a pipe and says the email must be an email and since there is no email here, um, the request will never get to our API. So we validate all incoming requests. Then we have like here where we can get all the users. Later in the next video, we will add JWT validation for this. So, or in the next video series. So um, that then there is restricted access to this here, but at the moment you can just access it. And this is just returning the ID name and email properties and not the password property. So we are storing the hash, the password hash in the database, but we are just returning it if we very yeah, specify it in our backend code and we are not doing it here. And then we can, for example, log in. And this also checks, for example, if there's an email or a password property. And if not, it says there's not an empty password. We can, for example, if we give it a false password, that's not, then it says login was not successful. And we can also provide, for example, an email that is not in the database. And then we are returning like the error object status code 404 and say that the user has not been found. So this is what we will be building in this video here. So here you can see that we are still in this NestJS of JWT project. And here you can see our first video or our first story is already set to done. So we made this in the last video where we cloned the project, we knit everything, we connected to the database and so on. And now we are here with the story two, where the title is, we want to add register and login routes with password hashing. So basically the story is, as a user or as a developer, I want to be able to register against our API. So I want to um, say I'm my name, my email and my password. And then I want also to log in with this email password combination later against another route from the API. So we have some acceptance criteria here. So first we want to have new properties um, for our user. So at the moment we are just having name and ID, but of course we will need to um, store the email and the password um, also in our database. So we have to update our entity and the interface. And we want to also add a user DTO and a for create and for login. Um, and this should be done with the class validator package. So with this, we can verify that the requests that are coming in, for example, with Postman, they will validate if there's an email property on the um, in the JSON. And if not, then the um, access to our API is denied. And so we can verify that only the stuff that we want or that the requests that are going to our API um, are having like, or are validated, so have the right um, um, stuff in it. So we can check if the, if the email actually is an, is an email, if the password actually is a string and so on. Then we want to add 
the validation pipe to validate all incoming requests and install the class transform package. This is needed from Nest.js and we can just in our main TS file at the validation pipe so that we can validate all incoming requests. Then we want to add a authentication module um, for Nest.js um, where we can um, in this video here um, add, the, or add the password hashing and comparing the hashes for login. And later we can also in the next video, so in the third video, you can already see it here, we want to add the JWT generation. This would also happen in our authentication module. Um, so we need this. And then we also want to add bcrypt for password hashing. We want to check what is pass password hashing basically. So we have here like a little article that I found that example or explains it very good. And then we want to add an authentication service where we can password or hash a password and compare passwords. So we compare then the, for the login route, the password that the user enters with his email and compare the password that he entered against the password that is stored or the password hash that is stored in the database. Um, then as next, we want to rename some functions and endpoints. So to create and login, and we want to return always appropriate status codes. For example, um, for at the moment, if we would log in and make a simple um, request and we have the right, um, then it would return 201 created, but we want to have, of course, a 200 um, status code. So we have to fix this. And secondly, here, or the last thing is we want to register or to test all the routes, so register login and getting all the users with Postman at the end. So we can now move this here to doing, and we can start by implementing the first stuff. So first we said we want to add our properties email and password to our entity and the interface. And for this we can go into our code and first we have to go to our new branch. So at the moment we are on branch develop and like you remember from the last video we merged already the um, first video stuff into our branch develop. So you can see here we have our basic user module which is just here to add a user. Um, which is just having like an ID and name. And uh, so we work with this. So now we say git flow feature start and we start a new feature branch and we can name this exactly like the story here. So this is our second story. So now this will create a new feature branch based on the branch develop. So you see now we are on feature branch or on, our, on our branch feature, Nest.js of JWT2, and it was created based on develop. So now we can start. And first we can, for example, start everything just with Docker Compose. And now you see um, Nest.js is available, our Postgres admin is available. And for example, we can Check this by running or making a request against our API that we made in the last video. And you see we are getting returned. If we go against API users, all users in the database at the moment, it's just the one user we created the last time. But we could also create here another user. And then you see we have now two users in the database. And I could already go here into our um, p3 at minor. Probably I have to log in again. And then I can go to my NSGS server. The password is the password, like you remember, that we have here in our Docker Compose file for Postgres uh, for yeah, just password, so it's a little bit easier. So we don't always have to search for it. And then we can just make a select all from user entity. And then you see now we have here our two users. So now we can go on and we can stop this here actually while we are coding. And now we can, like you remember, the first part of our story was we want to have our properties email and password in our entity and in our interface. So now we can go to our user, we can go into our modules folder, 
and now we have here our ID and name and then we want to add our email and the email is of course of type string and this should also be a column and what we also want to add here is we don't want um, that an email can be used multiple times of course so we set this to true so there can always be just one email so if I would try to um, register with the same email twice it would make an error because this is, it should be unique. Um, the second thing or property that we need is our password or actually this is the password hash that we store in the data database. We would never store the actual password plain in our database because of security concerns. So here we also annotate it with add column and what we want to choose here is we don't want to make it selectable. This is like an option that is provided by um, type ORM and if we set this, if we make for example a find one or find against our database later against um, and query it, then if we don't set this here because normally it is set to true, um, then it would also return always a password hash. But actually there are just some times where we working with the password hash and this is either if we are um, here if the user is changing his password or if the user is um, logging in where we need the password hash from the database but normally we often don't need it and so if we want to need it and we just make a fine one then it would not be returned but we can always make um, in our fine one or something we can say okay we want the password property and then we get it so this makes our code a little bit clearer later because then we don't have to exclude always the password property and this is just not selected by default and so this makes it very easier. Um, another thing that we want to add is um, we want to always store our email as lowercase in our database because if you type it one time with a uh, capital letter or an upper letter and the other type, we just want to have it to always find it. So we can annotate this with before insert from type ORM and this will be run always before we insert something in our user entity or before we store something in our database. And here we can say that this dot email should always be um, set to lowercase. Then we are just having like the email always in lowercase. We can verify this later. Then of course we have to make the same changes to our user interface and I named it user i because user interface makes it easier to grab to understand that we are at the moment using the interface later in the code. And so we here also need our email and we need the password and we can make the password optional with this. So later probably we are not always working with the password property so we can make it optional here. So we can mark this actually as done and now we want to create DTOs for creating a user and log in, log in with a user and we want to install a package class validator so for this we can just read through, through the Nest.js documentation for um, validation. <clears throat> And here we can see it is best practice to validate the correctness of any data sent into a web application. To automatically validate incoming requests, Nest provides several pipes available right off the box. And so we are using the class validator package. So we have to install this first. Let's give it some time here. So we can already install this here. And then we can write, uh, read through. So we have here some options. 
And what we can use, or what we can do is, we can just add the validation pipe at our application level, so in our main TS file. This will ensure that all endpoints are protected from receiving or receiving incorrect data. So this is what we want to do. So we want to use this here in our main TS file. So at first we are setting our global prefix API and we want to use the global pipes and there we want to use the validation pipe from Nest.js commons. And then if you have it here and we have like our DTO here in our um, endpoint, our post endpoint, then this will always validate if what is coming here in the body um, is um, val valid for the create user DTO. So this is what we will do later. And you can see here, these are basically um, some DTOs that we are also will be using. Um, they are just validating if the email actually is from type email with the class validator package from NPM. And if the password is not empty, for example. And there are also some, some more stuff. So we could go for a class validator here. And you can see there are a bunch of different um, annotations. For example, you can uh, the, yeah, check if the length is correct, if it contains something, if it is an integer and in between something and so on, or is it is an email, it is a date. So you can validate very much here. And you see if then, for example, the email is not an email in the incoming request, then this will directly return a 400 status code and say that request and say that the email must be an email. You could also turn this message here off um, by um, using some here. I don't know actually, but we have to, yeah. And what we also want to do is we want to use the whitelist because if we set this to true here, then the validator will strip um, Let's check this. So here, if we use um, whitelist, for example, in our global pipes, that any property that is not included in the whitelist is automatically stripped from the resulting object. Yeah, or we can just let it be, then it's not, not an issue. So now we have this here, and I actually found um, another project, a strange error. So um, if you're just trying to run um, Nest.js with um, the global pipes here activated with validation pipe, then you will actually not just need the class validator package, but also the class transform package. So we can Google for Nest.js class transform error. Let's see where was the error. Well, whatever we actually really need this. Or, yeah, let's just check for the error. Maybe this helps us um, to find the, the actual error message. So, and now if we're like saying docker compose build, this will build our um, Nest.js app again because we made some changes to the code. And since um, our Postgres database and the Postgres admin are an image, they are not rebuilt. But here our code is now rebuilt. They are running again npm install. And this probably will also connect or make an error on our database because at the moment we are having um, null values, um, for example, in our database for password and email because they did not exist. So we have to remove them from our database. So we can do this when this was built.
So just give it some time. And now we can start it. And now you can see we have here an error. Unable to connect to database because in our user entity table, um, there is email, where sometimes it's null and we say here valid should not be null. So we have to connect to our p3 adminer. Let's see if we are here. Just log in again. To our database. Then we have to delete all. And then this should work. So let's start up again. And now it should work because we are not having any data in our user entity. And now you see here, this is the error. The class transformer package is missing. So we always need this um, if we are um, using this um, thing here in main TS, we use global pipes. With the... So if we now search for this error, you can see here um, the class transformer error or reopen issue for nest. So here it says class transformers and always will be needed. So this should better be, or I think, should be added here into um, the documentation, but we can just install it and it's all fine. So we can install this here and now we can start or go on with coding again and check what is the next step. So now we want to add or create our DTOs so that we can later validate everything. So for this, we can make here a new folder that we call DTO. And then we can say we want to have a login user dot DTO dot TypeScript. And we also want to have a create user.dto.typescript. In our login user DTO, we can just say we want to export our class. And this is our login user DTO. And here we are having two properties. This is the email from type string and password is also string. And now we can add some validation. For example, we can check if it is an email. And for the password, we could check, for example, is not empty, so that it always needs a value. And in our create user DTO, we could say we want to export our class create user DTO. And here we want to have our name, and there we want to check that it is a string. So that it is a string and um, we also want to have here not just the name but also the email and password so we can just say here we want to extend our login user DTO and then we are having all the properties and we have the property name the property email and password for our create user and this is because if in our endpoint for login we just want to have like the email and the password and for creating the user, we want to have the email, the password, and the username or the name of the user. So then we can go in here and we can also mark this as done because we have created both of these DTOs and we have already added the validation pipe to in 
uh, to validate all incoming requests. So we can set this to done too. And now we want to create our authentication module. So we can use here the nest.js CLI, so we can just say nest. We say generate, or we could also write generate, but we can just go with a shortcut with G and say, um, what do we want to generate a module? And here it's the authentication module, so out module. And then here on the same um, as user, there should be coming the out module. You can see it here. Now we have our basic module. So we can move, set this or mark this as done too. Then we want to install decrypt for password hashing. So we can go for npm decrypt. You can see, you can just install this here. Minus minus save. So we save it to our package.json. Um, you know, and this is a library basically to help us to hash passwords. And we can see here, we can, for example, use the bcrypt.hash. So we can first generate, for example, a salt and then hash it. Or we can auto generate the salt and hash it then. And here we always have to store the hash in our database password. So we mark this as done too. And now we want to add our outsource for password hashing and comparing. So before we do this, we can read through this page here, which explains a bit about salt and hash passwords with bcrypt. <clears throat> um, before we implement it in our code. So it is very crucial to keep users' passwords secure to protect against cyber attacks. The first step is storing password on a secure database server. But whatever we do, we can never assume that our database cannot be accessed by criminals. Um, so we have to um, you know, sort or hash our passwords and store them within the database. So if we hash a password, um, we have a plain text password and put it through a hash algorithm. The hash algorithm takes in a string of any size and outputs a fixed length string. No matter the size of the original string, the output is always the same length. Since the same process is always applied, the same input always yields the same output. So this is what we need later to check if the password from the login is the same password or we compare it then with the hash in the database. So we then check if we hash the incoming password from the user for the login is the same hash as it stores in the database. And then we know, okay, the end of the correct password. So you can see it here. Every time we enter this value here into our hashing algorithm, we have the same result. Uh, sorry, we always have the same length for the output, whether we input this or this. And here you can see if we only hash the password, a hacker can configure out the original password because we always have the same outcome. So we need a salt. And this is just a random string. By hashing a plain text password plus a salt, the hash algorithm's output is no longer predictable. The same password will no longer yield the same hash. The salt gets automatically included with the hash, so you do not need to store it in a database. So in bcrypt, okay, now we are unsure what to use. So bcrypt uses the Blowfish cipher. One criterion, we want our hash algorithm to meet a speed. You don't want the algorithm to run too fast. You won't get into a detailed discussion. So hashing a password is not enough. We must also solve the password and bcrypt requires you to do so. Random bytes get added to the password and together the salted hash meets security recommendations on length and unpredictability. Another aspect to look as added is longevity versus record. Bcrypt is widely used and has been around for many years. So the algorithm has not been um, blown up or broken at the moment till now. And uh, yeah, you always have to stay on top because of reported bugs and security issues. So we can, like it says here, just use Bcrypt. And we can either if we do it like generate the salt and then hash the password 
we can also do it um, like this. This will have the same output. You see it here, this will have the same output as this here. And then bcrypt has yeah like two main functions. This is one of the hash and the other is the compare. So then we would enter, for example, the passport from the login that the user entered and um, compare it against the hash that is stored in the database. And if it matches our hash, then we equal to true and if not, we equal to false. So, yeah, we can basically do this now in our code. So, these are just examples. Let's see if we have anything here. If we go over it fast. Yeah, so we can just now start by implementing it. So as we remember in our story, we have inside bcrypt and now we want our authentication service for password hashing and comparing and add this to our authentication module. So we can use the nest CLI again and say nest generate and this time we don't generate a module but a service. And here we can say this lies in our auth module. So this will register automatically the service in our authentication module. And here we want to go into a new folder that's called services. And then we want the service called auth. And this will automatically add um, service at the end to it because um, here it's a service. So you see here, then we have the auth.service and this is called auth or authentication service if you want to spell it longer. And now we have it here. And in our authentication service, we want to do yeah, the two things that we said. We need bcrypt at first. So we already installed it with npm. And we can see it here. Um, where have we been? Um, we have to include our module. So we require bcrypt. And now we can and everything to our authentication service. So we want to have two functions and this is as first we want to hash a password and second we want to compare passwords. The first one takes in as an input parameter our password which is from type string and we want to return an observable which is also a string because um, we want to return the hash and this is a string. So now we say we want to return from our bcrypt and there the return type is um, a string and here we say it's bcrypt dot hash And here we have as our input the password and our salt rounds that we want to go. So we could go with 12. And we have to import from, from AXJS. So normally bcrypt, I think, returns um, not an observable, but in promise. And so we can convert it to an uh, observable. For compare passwords, we want to have like um, two inputs. Um, and these are this is, yeah, let's say like um, the password that the user entered and this, this is also from type string. And the second one, we have our stored password hash that we get from our database, which was originally created here. And this returns, I think, an observable any because bcrypt is not returning there any type for the compare function. So here we go again with from and we say bcrypt dot compare. And here we have to insert the new or the password and the hash.
And this is exactly, yeah, basically like they did it here, where we use bcrypt hash password. And we have it then here, bcrypt hash password, salt runs, and then we are just returning the out or the result. So this should be all for our authentication service. And now you can see it here. It's already in, or added to our providers and our module. And now this should be done. And so we can check this here in our story. So we can now hash a password and compare passwords with our authentication service. And, and next we want to rename our functions endpoints to create and log in and return appropriate status codes for success or for failure. So we can go into our user module, into our controller, and now we can rename this here from create to create because we want to create a user. And then in our user service we have to rename this here also to create. <clears throat> and we have to change this here because we are no longer using here the interface, but we want to use our create user DTO so that um, the incoming request is being validated. And then we can rename this here also. And as a return, we are still returning the user interface. And we have to like this here. Then we have here our find all where we don't change anything. This can say it is as it is at the moment. In the next video, probably in video three, we can make here some guards that you can only access this if you are having a valid JWT. And then we can make here another function or another endpoint for login. And actually we have to zoom in I remember. So we have here the login. We have to annotate this with post and this goes for the route slash users slash login. And normally if you log in then it would return for post request the status code 201. But since we are not creating anything we could add this to HTTP code and we want to have it return 200 if everything is okay. Then for login, we want to get something from the body. And this is our login user DTO from type login user DTO. So we validate that there is a valid email and a valid password in our body. So here we also want to return an observable and this observable should be of type, let's say, string at the moment. Observable. And then we want to return our user service dot login and give them our login user DTO. So now we have to implement this stuff here in our user service. So first this here is no longer the user interface but the user uh, create user DTO and now we have to look what we need to do here. So first we can add some let's say helper functions um, in our class that we you, you need probably multiple times. So we want for a login for example find a user by his email. So we can say find user by mail we named it email, I think. And so, yeah, let's look it up. So we have it here, user entity, and it's uh, email. So we name it here, like the same. Find user by email. And here we want to have provided an email from type string and returned. We want to have an observable like a Boolean. So if this returns true, then we have found the user. Uh, actually, I want to return the user interface. Um, so if we find the found the user, we want to return the user. So we say return from, and we 
again convert um, the user repository from type ORM, which normally returns not an observable but a promise. We return or we transform this promise to an observable. So we say return from. Then we say from our user repository, we want to find one and we want to find it by email. And here you see it gives us um, the stuff from our uh, entity as an idea. So, and this is the same name as here. So, this is enough. And here we can, for example, say because if we just would make find one, then it would not return our user with the password. This would not be returned because we made select false. So, we actually have to specify what that we want also to have the password property returned. And this can be done by adding like select. And then we say, what do we want to have returned? So for example, the ID, the email you see is giving us um, everything that we can do. The email, the name, and of course the password, because we will need this to, um, if we make the login stuff, to compare the password with the password hash. So we have now our find user by email. This should return observable for our user object. And now we can make um, a second one where we validate um, the password. So we can just say validate password. And we take here as input parameter um, the password, which is a string. And we want to return an observable which uh, should be a boolean. So this will just say true or false and will tell us if the password that we provided or that the user entered is correct. So here we want to return from, or we can say this is not from, but we want to use our authentication service where we have our um, compare passwords function. So what we can do very easily, um, we can use um, or we can just import the auth module into our user module here. And to make the service available, we have to add tier to our exports array. And we just say we want to add or export our authentication service also. And then we can use it here in our other module. So we have now imported our authentication module into our user module here. And then we can go into our user service and we can just add our authentication service to our constructor. Authentication no, of service, I think, of service. And then we can use it here. So we want then our out service and then we want to compare the passwords or validate the passwords, whatever. And you can see it here, we want to have the password and the stored password hash. So we say password. And as a second input, we will need here the stored password hash, which is also a string. And this should also be inserted here. And then this will return a Boolean like here. So then we can go into our user service and we add um, to check if our mail, uh, if the mail already exists. And we need this to check um, because if I register, um, you see that our email is having like our unique true. So there can just be one email cannot be um, there two times. So we always have to check before we create a user if the mail already exists. And if it exists, then we return like an error status code um, that um, the email is already in use or something like this. So here we want to have our email, which is a string as input. And we want to return also an observable from, or, like a boolean type 
So if we return true, then the email already exists. And if it returns false, then the email is free and the user can register. So we say return from. And here we can use our user repository. We can just use find one. And we search by the email. And then we can pipe our outcome and map it and say here we get in return from our find one we get a user and if our user is there then we return true so the user exists and if not we return false Can I import it? Pipe. So let's just edit import map from I think AXJS operators. Yeah, so this will return an observable with true or false. So map takes an observable in and puts the output also in an observable. So we will have an observable true or false, a boolean. So these are just for you see in our class at the moment. So we have a private. And then we can add our create and login function. So we have already our create function here, but this needs to be a little bit modified so that it works correctly. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to check if the email exists. So we can say return from, or not from, but this.mail exists, and we give him the email that the user provided and then we can pipe the outcome and make a simple switch map and say there we get in return exists a boolean and then we can check if it exists or not so we say if it exists so if it or let's say if it not exists, so if it's false or anything else, then we want to add or do all our logic. And if it exists, we want to throw like an error. So we can say we want to throw like a new HTTP. Uh, how is this called? Exception, I think. And we say, let's say email already in use and we can give it a status code so we can say http status and we can say for example conflict http status dot conflict so i think 409 or something like this we have to import the switch map and if it exists then we have to return something so for this we could for example say we are using again our out service and we want to hash the password because we want to save save the hash into our database so we give it here because it expects like the password we say we give it the user the password that the user entered this will hash the password so with our outcome we want to do something so we make here like a switch map and this is our um, let's say the password hash which is a string and then we can do something with it and we can just set our user.password is now the password hash so we can for example make comment here Overwrite the user password with the hash to store it in the database. And then this here still marks red because we are not returning anything. So 
we can say we want now to save this in our database. So we say we again use our user repository and we want to save it. And here we just give him the user. And again, like it's normally returning <clears throat> in promise, but we make it with prompt to an observable. And then this is actually yeah, like an error from, or something strange, I think, from a type ORM. Um, if I, I excluded um, or I made for the entity here, we select false. And if I make a find one or something like this without specifying the password property, then it's not here. If I specify it, it's there. But when I save it, when I get in return, the complete user object with the password property. So we have to, we cannot just return the save here. So the object that we get back from here, but we have to change it a little bit. And here we can just say we get as input like our saved user. So map, we take the um, an observable in, which is the user interface. And then we have to take an observable out. And um, we simply have to remove the password property from our saved user. So we can say uh, const and we strap it away. So we say we want to remove the password property and just have the user. And then we want to return just the user. And so this marks it now because it's the same name as here, but this should not bother us. Here, yeah, so I think this should actually do the job. So the create still marks as okay. Now we have to add the login function. So we can now delete this comment here. So we say login. And now we can say we have here our login user DTO. Actually, we can rename it here when this goes away. So we could say this is our, can uh, use shift if six to rename it. So we say this is our created user DTO. And then we don't have this here because where is it? Ah, so now it's gonna run away. So then we have here our login user DTO. And here we also return an observable. And this should be just a string at the moment, because in this video here, we will just compare the password to password hash and not add the JWT um, for the user for authenticate for later. This will be happening in the third video, like we see so in the beginning. So we will just return at the moment a string, and later we will also return a string for the JWT. Um, so we can now say with login, we want to first find this user by email. So we say find this user by email and we provide um, this the email and then we pipe the outcome and make a little switch map. And here we get the found user, for example. Or we can say let's let's name it user, which is from type user interface, and then we do something again with it, and this will be we are validating the password, and here we can use our function here validate password. You remember we need the password as string, and we store password hash from the database that we got here by defined user by email, so. In the login user DTO, we have the password from the user that it, he entered for the login. And in our user, we have the password hash from the database. So we want to compare now our login user DTO dot password against our user dot password. So against the password hash that is stored in our database. And then we want to pipe 
the outcome from this here again and map it to an uh, observable. So from this in return we get, um, I think it was an uh, boolean value. So we can just name this password mat or password passwords matches. So and then check if this is true or false. So we can say if password matches or else we do something. And so we say if password matches, then we want to return like our string login was successful. And otherwise we want to throw again an error or HTTP exception. So we say HTTP exception. And then we can say, for example, login was not successful and give it a status code. And let's say uh, unauthorized. And then this should throw an unauthorized error if the passwords are not matching or if something happens here. So let's format this a bit. This should be fine. And now, actually, I think we can yeah, just have a quick look if everything should be working. And then we can try to start it and make some requests with Postman. So here we have our HTTP code 200. Find all should still be working because we're not doing anything here. Having our auth module, we are exporting our authentication service. We are hashing a password and we are comparing passwords. I think this should work, let's hope so. So let, now we can just say docker compose build because we made some changes to our code. And in this time we can um, mark this here, rename functions and endpoints to create and login and with X with the status codes to done. And now we want to test and register the, the register login and users routes with uh, Postman. So let's give it a little bit of time. Oh, we can already prepare the requests here. So you see this was our last results. And if I would hit this now it would or should return that it's missing email or it could not validate email and not password because we are using our DTOs. So just wait a bit. So now it has installed, I think, all dependencies like decrypt and so on that we added. Just give it some time. And now we can start it. And we can check if everything works as we are expecting. So now you can see we have here mapped users and we log in route also. We have API users and register. This stuff here is all coming from Postgres admin, so we can ignore it at the moment. So here we have our user controller API users, post request for slash users, where we um, register one for login and one for getting all of the users. So if we now hit, for example, all of users, then it should return empty array because we deleted all of users from the database. And if I now want to try to add a user here with this request that worked before, it should return exactly this, because it, with the um, validator package, this tries to validate the email with our DTO here. 
checks because this extends the login user DTO if the email is an email and if the password is not empty. And since it's not here, it says it's not working, so bad request, 400. And uh, we can do this, for example, with the email and say just the same. And then it should say that the email is still not an email and the password is, should also not be empty. You can see it here and just if I make like a valid email from it, then this should work. And here for password, well, let's make one after all. So now you see email is now valid, um, but it's still not passing um, the API or the incoming in our controller because password is still empty. So for registering the password needs to be there. Let's just say password to make it a little bit easier. And then you see we get in return our user name, email, and ID. And we can go into our P3 admin. Password. And then we can validate that there is actually a hash or a hash is stored in our database and not plain password. So we connect to the data server again. We open our query and say select all from user entity. Now you can see here we have our entry and this is my name, my email and my password hash. And you can see it's two things. <clears throat> so if I query now the users, then I get just returned the one user that's there with ID, name and email. And I'm not getting returned the password because you remember um, in our entity, the password is with select false. So when I'm coming into uh, my user controller, if I want to have all and coming in here, I'm going to the user service find all and make the repository.find. And since we are not specifying like here the password property, it will just return all properties that have select to true. And since our entity, um, our property password is select false, it will not be returned. So then we can check our login route. So we can go against HTTP localhost 8080 slash API slash users slash login. So if we hit it empty, nothing here. And this is not a get, but a post request. So if we hit it now, you see, again, there is not a valid email and not a valid password provided. So we have to add this to the body. So we want to add raw, JSON, and then we have to add some JSON. So we say we want to add an email. And let's just say uh, to make sure the validation works. So this should never be executed. So you see the email is actually not an email. And if I just provide uh, a false email that is not stored in the database at the moment, we get an internal server error, which is not Good, where are we? User service, log in. Find user by email. Um, so for example, we could say, so we are here. This is normally closing here. So there. So we could go and add something here. And we can say if user, then we want to execute all this stuff. And 
return this. And if it's not here, we say else throw new HTTP exception. And we say uh, user not found status is there not found. Yeah, not found. Then we have to rebuild everything. And let's see if it works. Let's give it some time. And uh, yeah, at the moment, I think actually this should be like, like enough. So the requests should be working. We verify this would be login and then we can now start it. And yeah, let's wait if it's available. So now you see we get the status code 404, user not found. And if I get the right email with the user that I registered, um, but the password was wrong, then I get login was not successful. So then we are going into this here. So passwords are not matching. And if I now provide matching password, so we just use password, um, then I should get successful. So now you see I'm just getting returned a string login was successful with 200 status code. And this is because we annotated our controller here with status code 200. So this is now all right, and we can commit our changes. So we can say git at upper a. We say git commit with a message. And here, the starting stuff of our message is our NSJS outJWT, so that we can later find find it in our in, in the commit history. So we can say implemented password hashing and comparing and edit refactored login register routes for the user with returning appropriate status codes. And then we can hit enter and commit everything. And now you see everything is here committed. And then in our next video, we want to add, for example, for the login, the um, JWT validation. So you see here at the moment, login was successful. And then we would yeah, generate here valid JWT and return this instead of this text here. So now we can bring back our changes to our develop branch. And here we can just say git flow feature finish. And this will merge all our changes from the branch that we are at back into our develop branch so that we can then start with the next story in the next video on the branch develop and merge from there a new feature branch. So you have seen now we merge, merge our feature branch back into develop and deleted the branch. So we can now check if everything here has been set to done. This is correct. And we can just move the story here also to done.